video, you're gonna learn why you don't wanna sail into Sydney if you're sailing across the Pacific with the hopes of sailing around the world. Check out my book in the description, How to Sail Around the World Part-Time, if you wanna know how you can cast off the dock lines right now before you retire. Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. We give you the secrets to sail around the world. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why uh, circumnavigators, people sailing around the world, uh, probably will not sail into Sydney. And if they do, their circumnavigations may stop. Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. We give you the secrets to cruise the world's oceans. All right, my name is Linus Wilson. I'm the captain of the slow boat. Uh, we just completed our crossing of the South Pacific Ocean and we never sailed into Sydney Harbor. I'm in Sydney Harbor right now, which is a place, a beautiful place of enormous uh, historical and cultural significance. Uh, you know, Sydney is the biggest city in all of Australia and uh, is a huge economic center for the country. And you can see the opera house in the background and the beautiful Southern Swan uh, tall ship, uh, which you can tour if you're a visitor here. Uh, but you should not sail to Sydney Harbor. And I'll tell you why. So if you're sailing around the world, uh, the trade winds are north of 30 degrees. Sydney's about 37 degrees. Uh, the roaring 40s, the, the westerlies, are south of 40 degrees uh, and Sydney is neither on the way for people sailing west about the world on the trade winds or east about the worlds through the southern ocean route so it's a it's a basically a detour uh, that is far far away from where the winds will take you but a lot of people do sail into Sydney but most of them end up selling their boats here so in terms of a market uh, for selling the boats. It's a great place. Some of the wealthiest people in all of Australia live here in Sydney and uh, there's a lot of people that would like to own boats and so if you're here to sell a boat you can do that. According to data compiled by uh, the author and circumnavigator uh, Jimmy Cornell, about half the boats that arrive in Australia do not continue on into into the Indian Ocean. That about half of them will not be seen at major ports such as uh, Cape Town or midway ports uh, such as uh, Mauritius or Reunion Islands in the Indian Ocean. That is their circumnavigations end. So basically most of the people that go through the Panama Canal are gonna end their trips uh, before they get to Australia and most of the people that get to Australia are gonna end their trips in Australia. Uh, and one of the challenges here in Sydney is because you are so far from the trade wind circumnavigation route, which is for the vast majority of people that are stopping anywhere, they're going to take the trade wind circumnavigation route. It's typically only people in races or only people doing non trying to do non-stop voyages that are going to sail the southern oceans. Uh, so you're very, very far. So uh, I think it's something like 10 and a half south is the Cape York Peninsula and the, and the uh, Horn Island and Thursday Island, the Torres Strait, which is the trade wind route. And the trade winds run very strong uh, as, as high as 10, 10 south and much higher. So you're talking about 27 degrees of longitude to get up. And if you're talking 60 miles for every degree of longitude, you've got a lot of miles and a lot of coastline if you ever call in Sydney. Unfortunately, if you're a foreign boat here in Sydney, Sydney, most uh, nationalities only get three months to be in the country. So you would have to leave the country for a significant period of time, a year, over the course, three months in the course of a year, uh, to even continue your voyage because you are so far south, you wouldn't be able to get through the Torres Strait in that time if you called in Sydney. So I called in Cairns and it took me six weeks of continuous sailing to get to Darwin, which is the, the last jumping off point uh, before Indonesia and the Indian Ocean. And Darwin is in the Indian Ocean. Once you cross the Torres Strait, but that's a long, long ways from Sydney. 
you know, one of the misconceptions is the, the barrier reef is a huge barrier, but you can actually enter it in several places. So bef Brisbane is the last place before the barrier reef starts. And then, then there are many ports within there, which have good marine facilities uh, that you can take advantage of uh, along the Queensland Gold Coast, uh, including Cairns, which I stopped at. Now there are very few, there are no facilities between Cairns and Darwin, uh, but there is a town, uh, Horn and Thursday Island in the Torres Strait, uh, which you can reprovision at and get fuel and such. But in terms of boat facilities, uh, marine chandeliers, there are many places you can stop. And uh, for somebody crossing the Pacific Ocean, Australia is typically a, a very welcome stop. And there are a lot of uh, deferred projects a lot of uh, gear that your yacht is going to want uh, and uh, but you can get those uh, in most cities in Australia you know you can't do everything at once uh, for instance I had to send my life raft to this the suburbs of Sydney uh, but that was much easier than sailing to Sydney because the life raft got there a lot faster than I could have got there uh, by car or by boat and my, the car goes <laughs> about, I don't know, about 10 times faster than the boat. So, uh, so my advice to you is if you want to sail around the world and do not want to stop your voyage or sell your boat, don't sail into Sydney. But even, if you're, even if you're in New Zealand, for example, uh, and you spend the, the uh, off season in New Zealand, uh, the the, the non-sailing season, the cyclone season in New Zealand, uh, it's still very hard to get from New Zealand to Sydney because you don't have prevailing easterlies or westerlies. You have variables and uh, typically also pretty bad storms in the Tasman Sea. So a lot of, a lot of boats sink in the Tasman Sea. It's a very rough crossing. It's a much easier crossing if you're going through the Coral Sea, as I did. That is, you're, you're coming from Fiji, Vanuatu, maybe New Caledonia. You stay on the trade wind route and you enter into the Gold Coast at some point or the uh, Queensland coast at some point, such as I did in Cairns or somewhere between Brisbane and Cairns. Uh, but you, it's even easier if you actually skip the whole of, of uh, the Gold Coast and go straight to the Torres Strait and that is probably the easiest quickest way to go through but i think a lot of people by that time want to, to visit at least uh the uh queensland the state of queensland and, and their some of their uh population centers even if it's a relatively small population center such as cairns or townsville uh there, there still will be a lot of marine services that you couldn't have got done in places like uh, vanuatu or fiji Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. We give you the secrets to sail around the world. I'm Linus Wilson, and check out our podcast, the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. If you do sail into uh, Australia, then by all means, visit uh, Sydney. You probably will because you're going to fly out from Sydney to some international des or fly out from Australia to an international destination. And most of the flights are actually going through Sydney. So most commercial airports will take you to Sydney they'll have direct flights to Sydney in Australia it's the it's the hub of everything you know you might be routed through Brisbane but it's probably more likely that you'll be able to find it a, a bargain flight to Sydney and enjoy the sights and not have to worry about your boat let me know in the comments what your thoughts are your experiences if you've ever sailed into Sydney uh, have you crossed the Pacific? Do you want to cross the Pacific? What What have you done? And what do you like about Australia and the sailing scene in Australia?